Hello again and welcome back to Country File after the Christmas break. Well today we've got a special report for you about a con man who claims that he's fooled the world and left his mark on the British countryside. Many farmers regard him as nothing more than a vandal and few appreciate what he calls art. Well last summer Country File's Rupert Seeger went undercover to unmask the great hoaxer. What could be more English? A landscape painter on a hot summer's day in Wiltshire. A few strokes of the brush and this green and pleasant land is captured forever. But this is no ordinary artist. And this is no ordinary painting. What is it? Well, it's a mystery. Something secret is about to happen. And we'll have to wait until after dark. This elusive artist is up to no good. Doug Bow was known for doing the fake crop circles back in 1990. I don't know why you're going and interviewing this guy, because there's many other people who are much more reliable witnesses. What has this man, Doug Bauer, done to cause so much anger in so many people? Well, he's flattened a bit of wheat. For years, Doug and his friend, David Chorley, both artists, both practical jokers, made crop circles. Doug says they started the craze and conned the world. He's still doing it today. And making crop circles must be thirsty work. For I've had a tip off that the great hoaxer is inside this pub in Hampshire. I want to know about crop circles. You're certainly in the right place here. Dave Chorley, my friend, and I sat in this pub every Friday night for 10 years just talking about art. And then for the next 14 years we decided that we would do some crop circles. The crop circles, we wanted people to believe that flying saucers had landed during the night. You see, our circles were circular. UFOs, flying saucers are circular. So as soon as they spotted them when daybreak, they would say, hello, a flying saucer has landed during the night. But unfortunately, two years ago, Dave died. So that leaves me here drinking the pints by myself. Well, if you're still in the business, do you want an apprentice? Doug's given me his orders. Meet at Needler's End, midnight. I've got the gear, everything you need. I'm ready. Hi, Doug, it's me. Doug? Hey, Doug? Put that light out. We'll all be caught, you fool. What do you come prepared like this for? I've had enough, I'm going home. I spend the morning returning the few bits and pieces I borrowed. It takes ages. Then Doug picks me up in his car. Doug, I'm sorry about last night. Well, I, I, I'm lost for words, actually. I mean, uh, you accepted my invitation for what we were going to do, but, I mean, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, turning up like that. I, where, where did you get all that clubber from? I got it from a friend. What's the first thing you have to do, then, if you want to make a crop circle? We've got to make sure that everything's looked at in daylight. Otherwise, it can be dangerous. I mean, you just imagine if you're jumping over a barbed wire fence and your foot slips. I mean, I don't have to tell you. I mean, you wouldn't be in any fit state to do crop circles, would you? Have you done many fields around here? You see this field over here on the right, uh, Rupert? Yes. Now, that's one of our favourite fields. We did quite a few in there. Well, in fact, I, I think you'll find that we went into that field every summer for 14 years. <laughs> This is a very important field here, Rupert. 
This is where the first circle was put down in 1978. We walked from the pub and we went into this field one lovely night and we put the first circle down. It's not the only thing that happened here, you know, because if you turn round and look up there to that hill, which yeah. is Telegraph Hill, and it was there that I was suddenly hit on the head, which I thought a farmer had thrown a stone at me. It was the uh, outlet of the toilet from a jumbo jet, which was frozen, flood off, and coming down through the warm air, by the time it hit me, it was just sludge. So and you're being kiboshed by a bit of <laughs> yes, frozen that's sludge. Right. Yes, yes. I feel sorry for the farmers, especially when you tread a lot of corn down. I mean, it's... Um, Your designs are quite small. Well, they were, yes. I mean, um, 60, 70 feet across and a few little corridors and things. The most of the damage was caused by the people going in to look. Our amount of treading down, it, it, you could have salvaged it with by lowering the cutters of the combine. But there's no doubt that Doug's antics have cost farmers dear particularly those whose fields have been targeted time and again. Some, though, accept it with resignation. It's sad, really, that somebody has to do this graffiti on the landscape. It is very sad. Why they have to pick me out in particular, I'm not sure. They seem to, have, um, they seem to be having a fair good joke on me and um, not so much on other people at the moment. It's the people that make them is one thing, but the people going into the crops afterwards they, in fact, do more damage than the actual people that do the actual crop circles. How exactly does Doug make his circles? Well, it involves a lot of footwork and a wooden plank. Take a bearing. Any landmark will do, so you can make straight lines. And even the greenest novice can turn a trampled-down strip into a wide corridor. And circles, any size you like. Just hold tight. Oh, and in case you're wondering, we had the farmer's permission to make this design in his field. Now, back to Doug's story. By 1981, Doug and Dave had been at it for three years, but no one had taken any notice. The problem was we were starting off in flat fields, you see, because what we really needed was somewhere where the general public could look down on the, on the circles that we were creating. And then suddenly the punch bowl was uh, ploughed, and we knew then that crops would be planted there. And then we couldn't wait for the uh, summer to arrive because we knew then that we had a good chance of um, getting the publicity that we really wanted. A flattened circle in a cornfield. They turned up two weekends ago in the first week of July. Just what causes the circles is a matter of intense debate. Overnight, Doug and Dave's crop circles had really taken off. News of their discovery spanned the world. Meanwhile, back on the ground, an army of scientists tried to solve the mystery. What was causing the circles to appear? Was it static electricity, microwaves or a spinning plasma vortex? All the time, the evidence was there, standing right next to them. So we used to mingle and rub shoulders with them to listen to all the conversations as to get their uh, opinions as to what caused it, you see. And of course, David would be over about 10 yards away on one side of the group, and I'd be over here laughing. And um, then, of course, we got to know the researchers, you see. And um, I said to one researcher, I said, well, I'm a wildlife sound recordist. I travel around quite a bit. I said, uh, if I spot any circles, would you like me to let you know? He said, I would. So I used to, after we did a circle, we used to ring him up in the morning and say, there's one at so-and-so. The scientists weren't the only ones being fooled. Doug hadn't even told his wife, but she caught him out because he was clocking up thousands of extra miles on their car. In the end, I just said to him, can you tell me what all the mileage is about? He then went over to his studio, brought back all the press cuttings, showed them to me. He said, well, that's what it's all about. I said, well, what does that prove to me? You mean you didn't believe him? Well, not just like that, no. I mean, newspaper cuttings could have been referred to anyone, couldn't they? So uh, he said, well, what do you want me to do to prove it to you? I said, I'll select a design, I'll select a field, and you can do it the next evening, and then you can take me and show me that you've done it. And this is what he had to do. By now, the scientists were getting serious. Operation White Crow would settle the matter once and for all. There was high-tech surveillance and round-the-clock monitoring. They set their cameras up to, 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 to look down into the punch bowl 
and they were sat there night and day for seven days, hoping to uh, get the answer to the circles, you see. And uh, David and I had fallen out for a while during that time, and there was no circles being created. And I said to my wife, after coming back from a meal one Saturday evening, I said, I'm going to park the car, walk down behind them, and uh, put a circle down. And lo and behold, they spotted it in the morning and pleased them no end. Doug was enjoying himself, but then seemingly inexplicably, more and more circles began to appear. Doug was not happy. Why? Well, he's a bit of a control freak, and they weren't his circles. We were a bit disappointed about 1986 when the copycat hoaxers started in different parts, especially up in Wiltshire, around Avebury and Silbury Hill, all those important places, you see. Because in, in previously, these were so-called researchers, they connected their circles with burial mounds and uh, ancient hill forts. There's no connection at all. It's just that the field was good, as far as we were concerned, to have a bit of a laugh. The researchers went into a frenzy. Highly respected scientists were perplexed. Possible explanations became more and more bizarre as they sought to explain the root cause of crop circles. Now no summer was complete without the appearance of these enigmatic emblems in the fields. The crowds poured in. Some farmers cleaned up charging entrance fees. Japanese journalists reported for Nippon TV. Field research students were sponsored by Sony. There were helicopter rides and questions aired in the House of Commons. There seemed to be more and more of these circles that they seem to be becoming larger, that when people take soundings, they find out there's rather a strange electronic noise, and finally they find out there's a very substantial drop in temperature. I'm just confused, I'm not an expert, I'd just like to know the answer. One scientist stood out in his pursuit of the rational. Dr Terence Meaden was convinced he had the answer. The circles are made by a spinning mass of air that comes down very hard and impacts with the crop. In addition, this air is electrified. So this leaves electromagnetic effects behind. And these extra effects, besides aerodynamic ones, probably account for the rings and those funny claws which uh, angled out of some of the circles. Well, had it not been for Dr. Terence Meaden, we would have continued to do just plain circular, cir cir circular marks to make sure that the UFOs had come down like that, you see. But when he came on the scene, he said it was wind vortexes, and we didn't like that at all. So we had to think hard just what we could do to sort of keep Dr. Meaden quiet. So we invented the pictogram, which means that from the circle, you make corridors out with other circles, half circles, lines, and all this sort of thing. Dr. Terence Meaden then uh, resigned a little bit from the whole story. But Doug began to feel uneasy. The story was spiraling out of control. His hoax was causing national hysteria. Well, we thought the whole thing was getting a bit out of hand after, after 14 years. And uh, I thought, well, if we release the story, it wasn't for the publicity, because otherwise we'd have been searching for publicity during those, those 14 years. We didn't want any publicity. We were only having a, la a laugh over it. So on September the 9th, 1991, Doug and Dave went public. They owned up. When Doug Bauer made his announcement, I believed him instantly. Because for two years, my colleagues and I had already been looking for hoaxes. There is a genuine phenomenon which is able to make a rough round circle, and that continues. It has always been the case right back through all of uh, man's history and prehistory. But there are fake circles being created today, uh, which are very complex, very difficult to do, but they're being made by very clever people. OK, one scientific interpretation says that these are fake, while some simple circles might be real. But many people believe that these designs are just too complex to be made by hoaxers. So the mystery of the crop circle persists, like some indelible and symmetrical scar on the landscape. And where there's belief, there are followers. Just trying to sort of relax here and just feel, I don't know, see if we can feel anything, because in some of the crop circles you feel a bit of an energy, whereas some of them you don't. Just soak in. There's a great atmosphere in here. I feel a good energy and feel good, you know, comfortable, relaxed. It's a fantastic feeling. Every summer, there's a two-day convention held in the Wiltshire village of Alton Barnes, the crop circle capital of the world. 
Here, there are a lot of circular arguments. Nevertheless, people felt that, yes, this was a message. Something is targeting specific areas to write these little messages in the crops. Want a souvenir? A small industry has grown up around crop circles and it's fed by faith in the unknown. What do you think is behind the phenomenon of crop circles? I, I do this professionally and I've been doing it for many years and I don't know. A Native American, in fact, say that these signs come with great intensity when there's a change of consciousness. I call them the circle makers. I don't believe that they're physical. I believe that they're a non-physical, very high spiritual awareness, consciousness or gestalt, a group of consciousnesses that have been working together for eons. Some explanations seem like a flight of fancy, and everyone has their own theory. But one thing unites the believers. They won't accept it's a hoax. I certainly don't think it's men with planks of wood that are doing it, because they're far too intricate. They're far too mathematically correct. Well, even though they say they can do them like that. Yeah, but they say they can, but even though they've tried to reproduce that in the small amount of time that they've got, they've got a time slot of, say, what, four hours of darkness to try and reproduce something that brilliant, that correct, that precise. I mean, how can you do that in the dark with a blank of wood? You can't, can you? You can't possibly do that. So Countryfile decided to take up the challenge. Could we create a complex crop circle at night without getting caught? There were plenty of people trying to stop us. The faithful were out patrolling the roads. There was a rumor that we'd asked an elite group of young circle makers to help us. Well, we had. So the lads from London sneaked into a field. Time to get out a special night sight camera. Just a few hundred yards from the passing cars, the guys explain their plan. The diagram for this was actually done today. I mean, sat down this afternoon threw around a few ideas, a did a few preliminary sketches, and then spent around about two hours just actually working out exactly all the measurements for the formation, and then the construction procedure, which I guess is the most okay. important bit, working out which bits go first, and then what happens after that, and the most efficient way of doing it so that everybody can be busy at the same time. Now, I know it's too dark to see the detail, but for those of you who are interested, this man's using a pine plank, five foot long and six inches wide. A hardcore group of crop circle believers know they're close, but unlike our camera, they can't see in the dark. The work progresses and still the cars whiz by. Looks as if we're gonna win the bet, but not without trouble. On our way to the field, Doug and I have been ambushed. <laughs> Forget it. We're not filming anything here. We're You're going to film him making a crop We're circle. filming an interview here. Yeah, and he's probably made a crop circle. You're discrediting the phenomena, and it's wrong. This is not on. There are people, honest people, putting time and effort into finding out something which is actually happening, not people stomping bloody crop with pieces of wood. Everybody thinks it's a good idea to laugh at the researchers because they say, oh, well, they are believers. Come on, we all know it's a hoax. But nobody really That's seems not. to take the time to speak to a tremendous amount of people out nearly every night of the week trying to find out answers to this phenomenon. The team from London have completed half their circle. They're all pretty tired. And at last, Doug and I have eluded the protesters, but we haven't even started ours. Well, the big night's here, Rupert. So... This is the, this is the big occasion. How do you feel? Well, it seems easy enough during the day, Doug, but now it's night. Um, I mean, how are we going to start? Doug had been planning this for months. A simple design, a round circle with two bisecting lines. So therefore you've got four quarters with the corn running different directions. Doug marks out the circle. I keep track of the quadrants. I'm not very good at this. That's it. The guys from London are nearly finished. Everything's going to plan so far. It's, uh, it's not a particularly complex formation, I think. It's, it's quite straightforward. Uh, the most complex bit was the, um, the standing pieces in the centre, which we finished already. Now it's just a matter of putting down construction arcs and putting uh, 104 circles around the outside of it of varying sizes. Two o'clock in the morning, and still people are looking for us. And then it happened. We were spotted by a crop circle researcher using his own high-powered night sight. It had taken him time, but he caught us. It was quite easy to find you because you'd made a fundamental mistake of parking your car up a tram line. 
Um, it was parked quite a way up, but nevertheless, with our sort of equipment, we were able to see a little bit of reflection in the distance. So we took the tram line, drove up quite a distance, and uh, found your car. I mean, do you think you had an unfair advantage because we're, we've got a BBC film crew and several yes. cars? Yes, if you hadn't been here, I'm sure the, uh, the people who are making a formation tonight uh, would have got away with it completely scot-free. Amazingly, the researcher agrees to allow us to continue. Turns out he's made hoax circles himself. The lads from London have finally finished. They're tired, but happy. Needless to say, we've still got miles to go. Doug admitted later that with all the running about eluding pursuers, he got confused and measured it wrong. The circle is twice as wide as it should be. That's four times the area of wheat. Well, the big problem is, as you can see, that it's got light. And uh, we've been run around the county trying to avoid people following us, and we've been delayed by one thing or another. And um, as a result, um, I think what we've got to do is get some help from the next generation. Um, how about it, lads? Are you going to give us a hand? <laughs> Finish flattening this. I'm begging. Yeah, why not? I'm exhausted. The biggest laugh of the century, this is. Doug, who's 74, is an old trooper. He's got his second wind. Me, I'm just plain winded. OK, look, well, I'm only a learner, all right? Without Doug, um, we would obviously never be able to do what we've done because we've, we've followed in his footsteps and if he hadn't actually started the whole thing off, there would be nothing for us to actually follow on from. We've basically expanded on a lot of the ideas that the, Doug's original circles um, had and uh, made them slightly more complex with more complex geometry and... Um, <clears throat> slightly <just> more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I admire what you people have done. I mean, it, you know, I think it's just a logical progression, really. And I actually think if we hadn't have done it, someone else would have done it. Well, I'm beginning to think I was programmed to do all this by some force. No, I really am thinking that. It's affected me quite a lot. And um, I think there's something, something behind it, more than, more than we know of. This is the design the crop circle artists from London gave us before they started work. So have they achieved their aim? Well. Judge for yourselves. The farmer who owns this field allowed us to do this because this is the first time in history that the construction of an intricate crop circle has been carried out at night without lights and recorded on videotape. It's proof it can be done. Now, by comparison, Doug's circle is simple but elegant. And as you can see, it's about twice as wide as it should be. Around midday, it seems crop circle researchers don't get up early, the first examiners arrive. Despite everyone being told it's man-made, people say we've cheated. It's part of a government cover-up. Someone insists we've used the army. We say we won the bet. Crop circles are definitely man-made. Some of them, anyway. Well, Ruby, you should be pretty proud of yourself after last night. Thanks, Doug, but I've still got a problem. What's that? Well, you're a hoaxer, aren't you? So how can I be sure that you've done all those circles that you told me? Yeah, but uh, have a job to fool you and the BBC. Yeah, but, I mean, that's no real proof, is it? I mean, if your job's fooling you, then you're fooling you now. 